Good afternoon, everyone. Today we're going to do an example where we solve a more complicated trig equation, something like 6 sine of brackets 4 bracket x minus 3, um, all that minus 1 is equal to negative 4. And we're going to solve for all general solutions for any x um, that is a real number. Okay? So to start things off, it's going to look a lot like it typically does. It's just towards the end that we're going to have to think more about all the solutions that we gather together. So if we start with our equation, let's rewrite it so that it looks um, nice and formal. Minus one is equal to negative four, right? So the same way we always would, let's start off by adding one. And so six sine of all that is equal to negative three. Next up, of course, we're gonna deal with the vertical stretch, the six in front of the sine. And so we can divide both sides by six and get sine of four brackets um, x minus three is equal to negative one half. And it's at this step that we want to be careful in our solution because it's at this step we're going to take the inverse sine of both sides, right? We're taking the inverse sine to cancel out the regular sine, and we're going to take the inverse sine of the right side as well. And so it's at this step that we see four bracket x minus three being equal to, this is where we need to consider all the general solutions for the inverse sine of negative one half because this is where this domain comes into play, okay? So if we look at our unit circle, sine is, sine theta is connected to our y coordinate when we look at the coordinates of any point on our unit circle. And so our sine theta um, being y and we want, uh, and us, wanting the inverse sine of negative one half means that we're going to look for the points where sine theta being the y coordinate is negative which is going to be around here and around here now we can do this in degrees or radians since the domain isn't really specified let's use radians just for practice and so if you know the inverse sine of negative one half you'll know that this is at seven pi over six and that this value falls on 11 pi over 6. Okay? So we can also agree that um, these values are not unique, but we can also cache them after any integer multiple of entire revolutions around our unit circle. And so what we need to write for our solutions is 7 pi over 6 um, plus or minus 2 pi k, or um, we can also have 11 pi over 6 plus or minus 2 pi k, where in both instances um, our k can be any um, element of the set of integers. And so it's at this point that we want to perform the algebra of dividing by 4 on both sides, and so we divide by 4, and we divide everything by 4, and so if we go ahead and do that, everything by 4, what we end up with is x minus 3 is equal to 7 pi over 6 over 4, means that we can combine our denominators for a solution of 7 pi over 24 plus or minus. Now, 2 pi k over 4 reduces to 1 over 2, right? Or pi over 2 times k. So we'll have pi over 2 times k for our first let's say, set of solutions, and then for the second set of solutions, we'll have 11 pi over 6 all over 4, which brings us to 11 pi over 24, and um, we'll have plus or minus, again, 2 pi over 4, can simplify down to pi over 2, still times some integer multiple of k, and so we'll again have plus or minus pi over 2 times k, and again, combining both instances, for our general solutions, k can be any element of the set of uh, uh, integers. And now finally, we can go ahead and add the 3 to um, finish things off. And so we'll have x is equal to 3 plus um, 7 pi over 24 plus or minus pi over 2k. We'll have, again, adding three to both set of solutions, right? We're adding three to both sides, let's say, like so. And so we'll have 11 pi 
over 24 plus 3 plus or minus pi over 2k. And in both instances, we remind ourselves that k can be any integer multiple, like so. And now we could read off a few solutions if we wanted to. They're going to be uh, messy values since we are dealing in radians. These are going to be, you know, irrational decimals. Um, like we can make a quick note that we did um, evaluate our calculations in radians. Again, this would work the same way for degrees, except in degrees we would have plus or minus pi over 2 is 90 degrees, um, and otherwise things would look very similar. And so this would get us our general um, set of solutions. Let's maybe box that in down here. And so I hope this helps. I hope this starts um, to make connections between um, all the different solutions that are offered for more complicated looking equations like this. Again, the idea is that at the step where we're doing the inverse sine and the inverse cos and the inverse trig ratio, this is where we need to consider all the available solutions at our disposal and then we can finish off the algebra for the stuff that is inside um, of our trig function. Likewise, we have to divide everything by this coefficient, and so just be mindful of what that means for this periodic, um, um, periodic, let's say, element of our solution, okay? So, here we go. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.